Well, hello, everybody. I am Spectacular, the Silver Stacular, and in this video, you'll see Coin Guy and me talk about things going on in the world with precious metals, coins, counterfeits, and some very interesting thoughts. It's just two guys talking and enjoying themselves in the company of one another. And if that seems like something you'd be interested in watching, please stay with us as we just talk about our hobby, our lifestyle, and things going on in this crazy world today. Well, hello, everybody. I seek to educate and entertain through my journey of collecting coins and stacking precious metals. I encourage you to subscribe and please stay with me on this journey. I am Spectacular, the Silver Stacular. This is a warning out there, and I can't, I think some of this would fool me. They, it's a warning to everybody now that they're making counterfeit PC, P, PCGS certified paper money holders with counterfeit paper. So PCGS did not grade these. No. The holder itself is fake. The whole thing's fake. The paper is fake. The, the bill in it is fake. I've always been kind of like, because the holder for bills, I never liked them. I never liked how flimsy they are. Um, you got some right here. Yeah, they're not that flimsy. Uh, it's, I mean, it's I not mean, like a it's not like a slab like you get from a coin. No, it's not a slab, but it's. I mean, I pass one of these out with a ten thousand dollar bill to the kids, and they haven't been able to get any yet. You know, there's some teeth marks on the sides, but you know, <laughs> let me if I can get teeth in. Teeth marks on the sides. I mean, you know, it's just it's to pretty, me pretty firm. If I wanted to bend this bad enough, I would. Yeah, bend you could bend it, right? But you can cut it with pair of scissors, yeah. of course. I can't bend one of these. I no, can smash it with no. a hammer. No. You see what I'm saying? I mean, just to me, just to me. But anyway, so now they're, they're counterfeiting. they're making counterfeit ones. And these are, these are vintage ones. These are slightly older than the ones you see now. Um, see the style? Well, this is PMG. Well, how come they're not going after these people? Well, they're, they're putting this alert out, and they're working on the technology, and they've got other ways oh. to tell if it's fake or not, but they didn't want to put it in print. They are investigating it. Secret yeah. Service is on it. Yeah. Now this one I can look at. They said this was obvious to the naked eye, and this looks just like one of the these Civil War bills that came in the other day, a hundred dollar Civil War bill. Now back in eighteen in nineteen sixty one, when it was the hundredth anniversary of the Civil War beginning, Kellogg's, one of the cereal companies, put all of these bills in the box. Really? They were they were facsimiles. They were copies. When people were not as sensitive then. And uh, and it was because it's about history, and they had to. And it looked just like this, mm. the paper. Because as soon as he handed it to me, I knew to. You can't feel this, but you can look at it, and it says this is an obvious one. This one, that looks pretty darn good to me. You know, it's hard for me to tell just because of the it's printed onto a article. You know, I'd like to get that out and mm -hmm. see because they had like those little fine threads in there, right? The inner yeah, kind well, of threading. See, now this isn't a cheap bill. I mean, this is going to be a few thousand dollars in that grade. I mean, a 67 is an incredible grade. Uh, you know, you get an AU that goes for about 2000 This might be a $10,000 bill. I don't know off the top of my head. And this one they knew was not real because of the serial numbers and stuff. Like, who really knows? I'm not that good at this to know that it was supposed to start with a different letter. Yeah. I would look at this and be... First of all, you walk in with a uh, $500 bill from 1882 and you want 11000 or 30000 I'm going to say, give me a second to think about it. You know, I don't know if I'm ready to buy that or not. Sure. Um, it's right. like anything else. They're out there counterfeiting. I mean, here's a bunch right here. Awesome coins. Yeah. Before we get to these, I want to talk real quick about something a little different. So these are counterfeit slabs, counterfeit bills. Counterfeit certified paper. You know, uh, the Omega counterfeiter, mm -hmm. um, where he, you know, made like Put the... Put a symbol on him. Right. Gold, usually gold coins. You know, PCGS, I guess, had actually slabbed some of those. Yeah. Oops. He's that famous. Yeah. yeah. And that wasn't, that wasn't a counterfeit slab. That was them going, oops. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know what? Like anything, they're human. It's just like, you know, when you, like I've said before, coin grading is subjective. You know, uh, you can have a coin that you think is an AU, somebody thinks is an extra fine. Um, don't sell that coin to somebody because he tells you it's an extra fine. Go to somebody else who thinks it's an AU. You know, it's that kind of thing. 
Even when you're certified, I've more than once seen coins and I've told the person, never, never break this out of this holder. Because you got this on a day when the guy didn't have his coffee. On a good day. <laughs> yeah, he. Was, this was a great day. You know, don't ever break this coin out of the holder. Yeah. Because I've seen coins that were graded Unkstead. This is an AU50. There's no question to me. But somebody gave him an unk on it. I don't know. You know. I've heard, I've heard people say that some of my coins were, you know, they call it a gift. And yeah. uh, I, I understand what they're saying. It's, you know, <laughs> I got them on a good day. You got them on a good so day. So what are these ones? I'm sorry, I, I cut these you These are counterfeits. You know, in the, st in the story of counterfeit, I had a guy come in, oh, I think it was last week. He had two tubes, two rolls of, um, of dollars, of Morgan dollars. And they were all fakes. All fakes. All fakes. Too shallow. You put them under a microscope, and you can see where it has a sandblast look to them, like a, a, a rough beading on it, almost like a texture, like they used to do that popcorn ceiling look. Yeah. Think of a popcorn ceiling look on these, but they had somebody brush them to get the popcorn off. Uh -huh. But you still see little pieces between the hair on the, on the, uh, on the dollar and such. Uh, you know, because... Carson Cities are a little bit of a special coin, I guess. You know, just about every single Carson City. In fact, I'm going to go out on a limb and say every Carson City coin has extra value yes. to it. Um, you know, when you mentioned that there's certain dollars, it kind of makes you go, wait a minute, I got I to gotta think about this. Mm -hmm. Is that the same for Carson Cities when they come into your store? Absolutely. I, I got to look twice at this thing? You got to look twice at that 79cc because that coin gets phenomenal as it gets more money. The 89cc and the high grades. I mean, I've owned a few 89ccs, but I don't think I've ever had anything above a fine. Because then the numbers get really, really big really fast. But not like the 79cc will go up there. will get very big when it gets up above very fine, extra fine. Um, the 85cc stays about the same. You're looking at a coin that's 500 and very good and 600 and extra fine. I mean, it's not a big difference. And it'll go up when it hits the unks, but it doesn't go up 10 times as much for, let's say, a VF as compared to an unk 3. Gotcha. You know, it isn't that kind of jump. Um, but they're the, all the key dates. And what's what happened here? Oh, we added an S. Well, this was a fake. This one has an added S to it. You, under the microscope, you can see it. And this one, Hold on a I put this, this as a 14D altered. And you can see because the spacing is way off. And as a matter of fact, oh, it's way off. Yeah, it's like it's like got gaps in it, huh? That's crazy. The collection I bought today, this was in the penny book, and I wouldn't buy this one as a 14D. Which one? Oh. This one. I didn't like the look of the coin right here. You don't trust it? No. D looks wrong. It just doesn't look right to me. That's wild, huh? I and mean, you gotta be real. I, I think I've seen more counterfeit 14Ds than 09 SVDBs. Really? Oh yeah, I see a lot of counterfeit 14Ds. Because you know what? It's not that $500, $900 coin. It's the $120 coin. And people don't look as hard. They, they take the chance on the 100, where if you're looking at a coin that's a 1,000, you're gonna check it twice. And I think that's what it really is. Yeah. But this I wouldn't buy as real. I'm I'm ninety percent sure I'm right. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I don't think the dollar amount matters to counterfeiters. Uh, you showed off before on this channel um, a counterfeit clad quarter. Oh yeah. <laughs> and oh yeah. Just to see if somebody <laughs> could do it, I guess, right? See, when they used to do the counterfeits of the walk in Liberty halves back probably during the thirties, fifty cents could buy you dinner and maybe a room for the night in the depression. Fifty cents was a lot of money then. Now, if you're making, and I've seen counterfeit 1972 quarters, somebody made that just to see if he could do it. He may have did it in shop, you know, where he got some lead and he carved it out, or he took a mold, and then he reversed the mold and he poured lead and he made a fake quarter. That's back when classes used to have shop classes. I like went to shop class. Woodworking yeah. and, and electric class, which they need to do again. You need to show BOCES. Kids need that kind of stuff. <laughs> Somebody got a little owie on their finger, and the, the parents said, oh, I mean, no, not again. I remember, in, I remember in seventh and eighth grade in junior high school, I had electric class, electronic, electric, I think it was, 
and I made a basketball thing where you shot it up into the hoop and it lit up a light. Uh, I made these coasters and metal shop. You got a touch of everything. Yeah. And then I had ceramic class. I love ceramics. And I was making more. I have a whole ceramic chess set at home I made. You might remember that, great. that toy that was, uh, it was like an electronic set. And you could just, you know, manipulate it here and there and different things could happen. You could have like a, like a digital clock or things like that with that little electronics toy. My, my wife buys that for the kids. Legos make something like that with certain combination of Legos that make the radio move or make something move. Yeah. I've seen them buying those for the kids, for the grandkids. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, but like I said, I remember a shop. It gave me the first taste of other things. And maybe you find you have a skill set for that. Yeah. And my brother-in-law graduated in high school. He graduated with, uh, he did air conditioning and, uh, you know, air conditioning and heat. And then he went on to become a truck driver. <laughs> but he, <laughs> he got the certificate in the shop. Whatever works. Whatever worked for him. It's like they say, only about 10% of the people who go to college actually get a job in the field that they want. Yeah. You know. I'm one of those 10%. Okay. okay. <laughs> I mean, Tara went to school for law, and uh, now she's a, now she's a state-certified uh, guardian. So well, that law came in, working at the courthouse county. She was a banker for 10, for 10 years, and she worked with me. Taught her how to use money. That's good, right? What do you good got now? Fun. Colonials. Oh, the cool stuff. I think this stuff's really cool. This is my own. These are from my collection. To counterfeit is death, huh? Yeah, it says it on both sides on this one. Oh, geez, I meant In it. In case you questioned it. And here's a book I had on the shelf. And this is the book of early... I found all of these in here. Early American paper. And we mentioned before this whole counterfeit to death thing. Mm -hmm. that, that's not a joke. No, they no. meant it in those days. Yeah. They were for real. They needed to protect the money. Yeah. Yep. And this was in the middle. They were raising these funds were used to buy supplies for the revolution, for the, uh, for the, the republic, for the army, for the revolutionary army, if for the Federalists. If you didn't have something like this in place, the counterfeit is death, other countries, when they went to war, they would try to manipulate the money. Well, right? you saw when we were showing the, uh, the Civil War tokens, the Northern tokens, and even in, I don't know if it was still death in 1863, but it says on the back of those pennies, not one penny. Yeah. You know, or not one cent. Not one cent. Not one cent. They want to make you, they did a disclaimer. Not one cent. You ain't hanging me over this penny. <laughs> <laughs> not going to get in trouble for that. But you saw some of that kind of manipulation too with uh, like uh, uh, Pearl Harbor, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. You had the Japanese threaten to, uh, to dump uh, millions of $1 bills or $5 bills and tens on, uh, on Hawaii to try and bankrupt the U.S. government. And what we did, we stepped in and we pulled back all the money there and we printed the money that said Hawaii on it. At the same time, we warned them. By that time, Doolittle proved that we could reach Japan and, and Tokyo. And uh, he warned them that, well, if you do it to us, we'll do it to you. And the Japanese stepped back because they figured their economy couldn't survive it. Right. Whereas we were a powerhouse that could. So they... Scrap that, and that's why you have the <laughs> the bills that say Hawaii, you know, all the way up through the fifty. You know, by the way, those fifties are valuable if you got a Hawaiian fifty. How much? I've only had one, and I sold it for eight hundred a few years ago. Holy smokes! Yeah, it's, it's big bucks. It's biggest once again. Fifty dollars was a lot of lot of money. You know, it's like a person when you look at this. This is from you know nineteen twenty eight. Five hundred dollars. Wow. I mean, that was huge money. Hey. I had a guy one time come into my store, and oh, this was a dozen years ago, and he came in with like five $500 bills. Five $500 bills that his father had put away. He was bopping. Whoa. That was $2,500? Back in the 20s, you could buy a house for that. Certainly in the 30s, you'd have bought a house for that. Probably could have bought half of Spring Hill for that. <laughs> Can't buy much today, huh? No. No, not any. Not the way the market is now. I go down to visit my daughter or behind where I live. I hear they're building like 4,000 houses along county line. I mean, if they're, they're clearing land everywhere. I know. And the way they're getting enough water for all these people. Uh, they got to widen the road. I was over in Lowe's the other day. Just I couldn't because I worked with my brother-in-law for decades. 
A two by four is 10 bucks? Are you kidding me? Why? I remember buying them on sale for 99 and a dollar 29. It's, it's the building, it's everything else. They say we're short two million homes in this country. Well, they're gonna take care of that, it seems, right? What was it? What was the interest rates a couple of months ago? Three, 2.8 on a mortgage? Now it's 5.1. That's gonna dampen a lot of mortgages. I hope you locked in and took a non-variable mortgage. That's crazy right now. Because that's not gonna get any better. Yeah. If you have it, I think they're talking about another 2% at least by the end of the year. You start getting mortgages for 7%. Now, I remember back in the 80s, people who bought my house took a 13% mortgage in 85. 13% mortgage to buy my house. Wow. And I remember the guy who moved in across the street in 81. His mortgage was 17%. We're talking Shylocks now. I mean, my goodness. 17 but You only borrowed 25000 but you were paying back, like what, forty five hundred of it every every year, just in interest. That's wild. That sounds Incredible. like a, that sounds like a student loan. <laughs> well, those you don't got to pay. It seems I don't know. Just wait long enough, and uh, yeah, maybe and that'll go away. Maybe. I, <laughs> I see something in the news every single day talking about student loan cancellation. That every is just day. a ploy. I believe that's all about getting votes. Oh, for that's sure. The uh, that's like I said. The uh, that's the Machiavelli stuff. Yeah. You know, those of you who don't know, you had a gentleman who was a uh, advisor to, before I get to, to Machiavelli, let me say something else. I was watching Bank of America the other day oh, I, and yeah. about the profits for Bank of America. Do you know the origins of Bank of America? I have no idea. Bank of America back in 1906 was known as, now wait for it, the Bank of Italy. Really? The Bank of Italy was Bank of America. And I knew this. I made sure I had my wife look it up to make sure I was right. God forbid I tell you something true. <laughs> you won't think I'm a genius that I am. Oh, so but I knew that it was called the Bank of Italy. And here's what happened. 1906, you got the big earthquake in San Francisco. Then the fire breaks out. Everybody locks the doors on the banks and they run for the hills. Well, Giovanni, the guy who owned the Bank of uh, Italy, he, lo he owned orchards. He got an apple cart or an orange cart over to his bank. He got some guys with him. They loaded all the gold, the silver, and all the paper money in the back of the cart. And they covered it, from what I read, with oranges and melons. And they brought it out to the farm. They got out of town. Wow. Got out of Dodge. <coughs> Fire is put out. Everybody goes back. He sets up a store. Now, those are for those of you, unfortunately, I might have found out the hard way. If you have a fire in your home and you have a cast iron, a metal safe, you cannot open that safe right away. No way. <laughs> no way, because there's an old book called Fahrenheit 451, which is the burning point of paper, 451 degrees. Now, you get these big, thick, heavy safes, and you pop that open, it may still be 700 degrees inside that safe. Because it's been sitting for two days in a 1,000 degree temperature, or 1,500 degree. Insulated. Inside got very, very hot, but there's no oxygen so it can't combust and burst into flames. But if you open the door and that oxygen goes in, Boom. that door is going to explode and hit you. Holy smokes. So what happened was the big banks couldn't open for almost two weeks. Anywhere from 10 days to two weeks, a lot of the big banks couldn't open. He came in, set up a table, and he was lending money to everybody. Everybody. The Bank of Italy. Then, from what I was reading, he, he started opening up branches. So they were in multiple. He's like one of the first people to have multiple branches of the Bank of Italy. Now, you got to understand, all kinds of people get prejudiced against. I'm sure there was plenty of prejudice against a place called the Bank of Italy, sure. especially to the snobs of Knob Hill and San Francisco. Who do we know lives there? Okay. Anyway, <laughs> especially to a certain group of people. Now, he also went, oh, he was, must have been a great businessman, because then he bought up the Bank of California. Now he's getting smart. Yeah. He changed all the branches to the Bank of California. And he was one of the first people with branches. And then it went on and on. Bank of America. That's the truth. The foundation of the Bank of America. That's fascinating. That's the truth. And I never knew that. And the lesson to be learned is if, God forbid, you're in a fire, let your safe cool off for a week. <laughs> and really, you don't want to, you don't want to, all this is going to flash, burn, and melt. You know, you want to, especially if you've got a lot of paper in there. Yeah. 
Um, the plastic was going to melt. Oh, I don't know what it, I guess the plastic, you're in trouble either way. But getting back to Machiavelli, Machiavelli was the consigliere or the advisor to the Medici family. Now, the Medici family were powerful in Florence. Machiavelli was born in the late 1400s. The Medici sponsored artists like Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci. And we talked about da Vinci. He was really an inventor and he invented war, weapons of war. I think he invented a thing for multiple arrows to be fired. Anyway, and he advised him and he wrote a book called The Little Prince. That book is about politics. I am sure that Machiavelli and The Little Prince is required reading I would, I would believe it's in Walden Business School, all business schools, and probably in military, because, you know, part of military is misdirection and misinformation, and the same thing with politics. Politics is about misinformation and misdirection also. And when you look at what's happening in the world now, about people who were concerned about November, and now we've created another stink. I'll tell you something. The politicians you have now have nothing. Machiavelli is an infant, an infant. And his books have required reading in all those schools, sure. in all those kinds of schools. But what you have now, we're two steps behind these people. You got to think like them. And that's all Machiavellianism. And that's exactly what it is. It's disgusting. Well, it's interesting. We have these people to learn from, like Machiavelli and stuff. And so these people that are in power, they're learning from somebody from a long time ago, and they're going above and beyond what happened I, I, to them. I got to believe that Machiavelli, you know, like some children get the uh, books about the cat in the hat. I think the Clinton, I think Hillary had Machiavelli's book when she was three. Sure. I'm sorry. Sure. Don't like it? I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. They, nobody does it better. It's just incredible misdirection you have one thing that's happening you create something else shame on you well we have uh, some weird things going on right now let's talk let's talk a little politics right now uh mm. the ministry of truth have you heard about this oh god this is this is like from that book i was telling you about atlas shrugs i mean where you've got this is orwinian you know orwellian you know 1984 big brother that's what that is. Yeah. And you've got a woman who denied everything that's happened as far as the whole three-year spoof about Russia and the disinformation that Hillary created. Give me a break. I mean, come on, people. You know, everybody got upset these last couple of years. I think all sides were kind of annoyed by um, people getting posts deleted on social media, uh, things being corrected, um, you know, censoring people. And now that's what we're kind of going going back to is government controlling what we say and do, which is totally against the First Amendment. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if there's always a way around something, if you can't have what you want in one state, move. Move to another state. You know, when you look at, uh, as you say, governments, look at all the controversy with, um, what's his name? The guy who just bought Twitter. Oh, Elon Musk. Musk. Yeah. Yeah. Look at all the con. Now the Times comes out with something. See, people don't read everything. When you look at the New York Times, and of course everybody knows the Times, the Post, CNN, all those kinds of papers are in the pocket of the Marxist liberals. You look at this article about him coming from South Africa and his father was a racist and he went to school. No, none of that's true. When you read the article, they disclaim their own headline about the fact that his father was in a party against apartheid. They didn't want apartheid. He went to school with all types of children. I mean, it's just, it's just anything they print, it's to their own means. Just like the singing nun or whatever she does, who is going to be the uh, secretary of truth, uh, Julie Andrews, mm -hmm. you know, she's got a pretty, I think she can sing pretty good, actually. Great. But, you know, how do you stand there and you're going to make this person in charge? Or well, you stand in front of the uh, Congress and you tell us that you have control of the southern board? My God. I don't know. It's I don't crazy. know what's coming. But I think And it's... the other thing that scares me is news I've heard recently where we're taking credit for giving information to the Ukrainians on the location of the flagship, flagship of the Russian Navy. Are you kidding me? 
that may be true, but I would. Did did these people ever go to war college? Why would you admit to something like that? And you blast it all over. You got somebody who's back against the wall. He's going to turn around and say, "Well, I'm going to strike back in in, in equal measure." I wouldn't want to be on an aircraft carrier in the Pacific Ocean. One for one. That's what he may do. But how do you go out and tell everybody? What is wrong with you people? Yeah. This goes back to Obama when he'd say, well, on the 13th of June, we're bringing 55 new troops. Why would you do that? Well, it's, it's unusual to me what's going on because they really want Americans to be on the side of Ukraine. For whatever reason, that's beyond my knowledge. I don't know why, but they really want to push you to stand with Ukraine for whatever reason. I like the Ukrainians. Okay. And I had said... I had said months ago, you're picking on the wrong people. The, I know the history of these people. If anybody who reads history will know that these people, these are the child, grandchildren and great-grandchildren of the people who fought the Nazis for six years in those same lands, in the same forests. Yeah. I mean, these are not a bunch of pushovers. God help this country if we ever have a worry about defending the Pacific coast. Half would run away and half would surrender. I'm afraid of that. There was an article my wife was reading to me the other day, and it was some Arab sheik. It was from one of the Arab countries full of oil, and he was being interviewed, and he said, my great-grandfather rode a camel. My father rode a camel. This man's about 70. He goes, I drive a Mercedes. My son drives a Land Rover. My grandson drives a Land Rover. My great-grandson will ride a camel hmm. because they all got it the hard way and they built it. They've made it too easy for the next generations, and they all expect everything to be given. Do they have the fortitude yeah. to handle things like the Ukrainians are? Right. I, I, you know, I, I'm rooting with them. I, I, I appreciate the people in just about every country. I think a lot of people are just regular people just trying to work like everybody is. But I think that the government in a lot of places, I don't know if I trust them all. And I have some questions for you. Let's talk about this for a minute. Uh-oh. So um, your buddy, uh, the guy that you voted for, right, Joe Biden? You voted for him? <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways. Uh, I told you what I thought about that a year and a half ago. I told I, you, Mike's my, my, my background, and I said he had onset dementia then. Well, that guy, um, at least somebody that controls his Instagram, uh, put on his page that he's proud of Alabama and the Lockheed Martin facility because they are making Javelin missiles and they're shipping them over to Ukraine to help combat what's going on over there. And they've posted this. This is this is big knowledge. Um, Javelin missiles are pretty expensive from what I've gathered. And it's like, I don't know if I wanted my tax money to go to that personally. What you have there is the it goes back to if you weaken Russia enough, you never got to face them. I'd rather take that $300,000 missile to blow up a $4 million tank on that land in that country rather than our land in our country. But, you know, this also goes back to the battleship thing where we're posting this information yeah, that's for crazy. everybody to see. And you're telling them the location of the generals that you took out. Once again, I mean, I saw what happened in Afghanistan. The whole world saw that. Even people I know who voted the wrong way see that and have got to be shaking their heads. Yeah. My God, did anybody ever go? Everybody seems to be a political appointee just because of favors. Do you have any knowledge in the area in which you're doing this? I'm just scratching my head about some things. I'm fearful. Yeah. And I have people today. I got people the last week who cashed in gold coins. Okay. Why are you cashing in gold coins? Here. Yeah. Now, this is all interrelated. I'm not just talking politics. <laughs> um, you got, so you're the coin guy. What are you doing talking politics? Yeah. Person cares these in. That's pretty. I like those. If people don't know and people don't seem to grasp this, that politics plays a serious role oh, gold in precious silver. metals. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, you look at these. Both of these were handed to me this week. I just can't make ends meet. That's exactly what they said. Really? Because maybe in February you were 200 behind, so you put it on a credit card. Well, you dipped into the rent for March. Now in March, you're 300 behind, $300. Well, now you're into May, and now you're 500. Well, it's time to dump a $1,900 coin so I can catch up, and maybe I can get through the summer. Maybe things will change. Yeah. I remember three months ago, bread was two loaves for $3. Now it's $3.59 a loaf. It keeps I going up. I picked up eggs the other day. It was 
three fifty nine a dozen was one eighty nine for 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 Christmas. Jeez. I mean, I'm not going to starve, and I can afford to lose twenty pounds. But that ain't the maybe forty pounds. But that's <laughs> not the point. I mean, the point is disgusting. Now they're talking about baby formula, and now I was reading in the 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 uh, the, um, the Wall Street Journal was talking about the Russians have sabotaged your machinery. They've ruined the fields. You know, this goes back to the Romans when you conquered a country and you salted the fields so they couldn't grow wheat, yeah. so the people starved. Now the Russians are doing this? My God. I uh, I question this, too. I don't know if you've seen this, but, um, you know, if, if a country's getting bombed, getting destroyed or whatever, would you take a trip over there and go hang out? No. Nancy Pelosi thought it was a good idea, right? What's that all about? She went and hung out with uh, Zelensky? Machiavelli. Machiavelli. Misinformation. Well, it's it's politics. Yeah. It's only politics. She's doing for the optics. That's all it is. That's your future vice president. Do you believe for a second that she went over there or if they came here and they filmed? No, I think they went there. You think I they think went they there? Would go there? I'm surprised Trump didn't go over. He would have upstaged all of them and he should have. They looked at it. I, I'm surprised he didn't do it. That would have been a masterful stroke. He would have upstaged all of them two months ago. But why would you go to a place ago. that's that's getting bombed right now? Well, you you look at it and you weigh your you weigh your chance. I don't like to fly, so just fly in there would scare me. Yeah, would and, worry me. And everybody's but, got javelin missiles now. Yeah, you know, they all got javelin <laughs> missiles. But the problem is, ours work. Theirs don't seem to work. You see about the corruption they have in Russia, where you have tanks and you have the rubber tires that break down. After six weeks, because you have tremendous corruption. Yeah. You paid for one thing and you got something else. I'm, I'm very skeptical mm. of a lot of things that I'm seeing and reading and stuff. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to see the news anymore. I tell you what, man. I don't. I, I watch other videos. Yeah. I watch new. They got this new series on. What's it called? The Offer. It's the background story to making of The Godfather, one of my favorite movies. Oh really? Oh yeah. Uh, the, it's called The Offer. I think I'm up to episode four. The trouble they have getting through the New York mob in order to film it because you were making fun of the Italians. You know, every group, the NAACP, the Irish have their organizations who looked out for the Italians. You know, I, you know, they talk about blackface and they carry on. I remember graduation and Halloween, a whole bunch of kids came up dressed as gangsters. Mm. But then again, 1972 was the year of the Godfather. Yeah. So I guess it has relationship to that. Oh, you want to hear my mob theory right now? Go ahead. Okay. Now, this goes in, in Florida. Where, where that's where we are right now. We're in Spring Hill, Florida. Tell me what you think about this. The mob is still working, okay, and they're buying and owning car washes. Have you seen the car washes going in? I watched the car wash they built at the head of Marina Boulevard. When you're looking at this building, and they must have dropped off, <coughs> I think they dropped off 4,000 Cinder bar, cinder blocks over there. Yeah. I said to my, what are they building? It looked like they were building a fort. A little underground vault. I think they're building a fort. <laughs> now, see, I remember that property 10 years ago when there was a 100 foot deep sinkhole on that land. It was a wild sinkhole that looked like it went some kind of Stephen King ending at the bottom of it. And I said, who's building on this? They filled it in about four years ago and they let it lay dormant for four years. Nobody came around and asked Coin Guy about what that property was like up there. And some fool built himself a big, beautiful car wash on it. They're going to go underground one day. This is property a couple of hundred feet from 50 and Marin. This is prime real estate. He must have paid a million dollars for all of that. Yeah. And you built it on a property that had a hundred foot sinkhole? Whoops. You know, well, maybe it's, you must, you, I hope you put those uh, support pins pretty deep. I just don't know what the heck's going on. I go down the road and coming soon, car wash, coming soon, car wash. Car you know I'm like, heard, how many car washes do we need? You know what I always heard? And and this, nothing to do with money, but these are people with money. Um, they open, the other thing you see everywhere are storage units. There's they a lot of storage huge units. Huge storage units. They're everywhere right now. But somebody with money says, no, that's, when you have a storage unit, and let's say you have a thousand units, your money is the outlier for the land. And you can build your storage unit next to the big power lines. Nobody cares. Okay, you build your storage unit there. You pay for the land and you pay for the units. Maybe it costs you $2 million. But you only have to have people there because you don't really worry about the landscaping. You have to have a person who's going to keep an eye on everything. 
And these people are paying you, what is it? Is it $100 a unit times 1000 That's $100,000 a month. Crazy. This is going to produce a million dollars a year for you. Wow. If you laid out $2 million, you laid out $3 million, you're going to have some cost for taxes, insurance, employee. But I'll bet you you're getting 75%. You're clearing 700000 yeah. a year. In three to four years, you get all your money back. And this person had money, so that's where you put your money. That's where the people, you, you, you do it once, and you walk away, and it takes care of itself. And it's good for 20 years. Meanwhile, you're getting phenomenal return. And that's what they built up at the other end, under the power lines over there. <coughs> Tremendous storage units. Yeah, they're everywhere. Them and car wash. I don't see the angle in car wash, just to be honest with you. You know, it's just, uh, I just don't see the story about that. No. You know, that's... You, know, you can't trust. You can't trust my mob story. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, but I just don't see the money made on car washes. Well, here's the thing, right? It, oh, geez, I'm going to get offed for saying this. Um, <laughs> make, they're going to make Be me careful. An offer. They're going to make me an offer I can't refuse. All right, so like you own like something like that, like a car wash, a laundromat. You say, man, it's been a real busy week. We had five thousand cars that came through, and that's why we had X amount of money. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. This is like <laughs> when you watch the movie The Accountant. You know, and it's like, you know, the, the store next to the accountant is he's selling uh, whatever it was, seafood. And he's selling how much seafood? But there's never a car in front of the restaurant. Yeah. You know, it, it's, well, I don't want to use the <laughs> words. But uh, I understand what you're saying. Back to gold and silver. Yeah. Uh, so, hey, prices came down quite a bit on, on gold and silver. What are you thinking? Well, I think I mentioned this last time. Here we go. On the 19th of April. Gold hit 2000, 2001 interday. Silver hit 20, 26. On the 4th, which is two weeks later, it was down to 1863. It dropped $137. Silver down to 2227. Yep. Silver dropped $3.70. And it ain't much better even today. I mean, it's 1883. And it's 2234. It's still down incredible amounts of numbers. Like I said before, it's all about manipulation. Uh, people still buy the gold. People sell it because they need the money. And they're not happy because they say to me, I wish I'd sold this two weeks ago. I would have got 100 more. Yep. You're right. But getting back to that, you know, I feel bad for those people on a fixed income of less than $30,000. They absolutely feel this. I mean, those who make the laws don't have to feel the pain. You know, they're just, just the way it is. And once again, like I said, you've got people who have degrees in business and they can't tell you how the unemployment rate runs. How did you get that bachelor's degree in business and economics? They're going to be truck drivers soon. Name. They're going to be truck drivers. Uh -oh. That's what we need. <laughs> they need truck drivers. I have no problem with a, a kid going out there working, making 120000 Yeah. What is it? Who is it that's starting at uh, it's Walmart? Starting at 90000 to be a truck driver? No way, really? 90000 Jeez. Why be a coin dealer? Well, that's, I mean, well that goes no, back to you exactly. talking about these but. degrees that only 10% of people actually use that degree that they went for. Uh, they have to, they realize that uh, they're not going to be ocean biologists. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I remember when my cousin, and she's watching this, I remember when my cousin got a degree from Stony Brook in uh, archaeology. Now, this is... Close to 40 years ago. Yeah. She got a degree in archaeology. And this is big Indiana Jones. I said, what are you going to be, Indiana Jones? I said, what are you going to do with a four-year degree in archaeology? I mean, that's the kind of degree you either teach with or you get a job as a librarian. <laughs> right. I mean, what do you do with that? I don't know. That's like getting a degree in humanities. I guess you can protest and march if you have a degree in humanities. But where does it go with you? I mean, practical knowledge. You know, if you're a good welder, and if you ever become a marine welder in Florida... You'll always have a job. You ain't, you'll make 150000 a year. Yeah. I had an electrician in a couple of... About two weeks ago, near the chandelier put up. This guy, you know, having worked in the building trade with my brother-in-law for 20 years, having worked with my hands my whole life as a professional cook and chef, you can see a person... Who makes it look easy that tells you he really knows what he's doing yep this is a guy who's whipping back he knows right where the nippers are he knows where everything is on his utility belt 
This guy was fast. And he, wham, bam, he had the chandelier up. He put the other light. He even threw up two smoke detectors. He was in and there and gone in less than two hours. Wow. Okay? And he got paid some good money. Why am I going? Well, probably the only job better than that is to be a waitress in a steakhouse. Hmm. But how much schooling do you need? Right. There's such a disconnection between things. It's like, why am I going to school to be a dental hygienist? It's like Tara tells me. You know, what is it, Target is offering $22 an hour? $22 an hour? I don't know how some of these restaurants around here keep the kids. I mean, I was listening they to... They don't. They, they're in and out constantly. You can't. How <laughs> are you paying them ten seventy five an hour? Right. They can get that on one table. Yep. You know. Learning a skill, going to a trade school, I think that's where it's at right now. That's, that's the, it's come back around to that now. I've always said that, even my, my grandchildren, I put money aside for them, birthdays and Christmas, and whether it's for an education, a house, or if this is going to buy, you know, one of them, the, the electrician's truck they need, it'll buy their equipment, so be it. It gives them a leg up. I have no problem with working with your hands. That's how I did my whole life. Yep. And my grandparents all worked with their hands and owned their own businesses. I mean, I have no, I don't look down on any man who's a blue collar worker. If you know how to build a house right now, Amen. oh, you got a job. You ain't kidding. Yep. That's like I'm looking at all those empty lots. How are you filling all that in? I mean, how are you building all these homes? Hopefully those people that were playing Call of Duty on the video games, they, uh, they learned some skills on the side how to build a house rather than bring them down. That's like when I used to have all the kids walking past over here. And I used to yell with them about climbing over the dirt and everything. And you got all these kids over there playing New gi -Oh. I said, you got like, you know, there's 40 kids in a room. You don't need to. You got to leave the doors open in the winter because it generates so much heat over there in the middle of the winter. <coughs> you got 40 kids over there. Everybody's 30 pounds overweight. None of them have ever had a girlfriend or played a game of stickball. Yeah. Here's a hammer. What do I do with it? <laughs> they, they're going to they're gonna stir their iced tea. <laughs> or they're slurpy or whatever the hell they drink. They have uh, no skill sets. Right. They don't know how to work a 10 or 12 hour day. Yeah. No. I mean, you know, I want my kid, my, both my children were working from the time they were young. Both of them started working in pizza places or gas stations. They, Tara was babysitting at 12. I mean, Brian was about four. He was shoveling snow at 13 because I did. Yeah. Now, I don't know if my grandchildren will. Or his children, maybe. Maybe they don't have to. But even if you don't have to, it doesn't mean you don't. Why not? I enjoyed working physically. I thought it was oh, when I too. used to do yeah. construction. I, I, I enjoyed working physically. And I would shovel snow and all. I, I enjoyed it. It yep. didn't bother me. It's just like now. I, I think moving and walking around, I'm nowhere near as physical as I was 20 or 40 years ago. But, you know, you look I can still work all day. Let me see a python. Show me a python. Look at that thing. Holy smokes. Woohoo. Oh, you almost ripped your shirt there, guy. It used to be what is filled. Gee whiz. But the Chinese took that from me. <laughs> you know, luckily Nathan knows how to do some, like, uh, jewelry work here. I mean, it's, that's a skill, right? You're always going to have people uh, with jewelry. They come in all the time. Yeah. Sure. That's cool. Absolutely. Well, guy, it's been great. Um, hopefully the world gets better, right? I hope to God for our grandchildren. And it's not for us. We're looking at the next... The next generations is exactly what we're looking at. I'm just fearful. I'm fearful what's going on. It's so blatant and obvious. I mean, you know, oh, don't talk politics, don't do this. But my God, are you blind people? Yeah. Are you blind? Right. I mean. What final advice going out? Um, what should people do? Should they sell like crazy, get rid of it before this price drops more? Should they just hold? Should they just do what they've been doing? Huckle down and hug your loved ones. Yeah. God bless America. Greatest country on earth. Amen. Amen. Bye-bye.